Hi everyone. Welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a build update number three of our Monogram Revel 64 and a half Mustang convertible kit. I'm having a blast. This thing's going together so nice. It's it's exciting how how nice everything's fitting up here. Uh, on such an old kit, this thing, for you know, being back a monogram kit, it's got to be in a ways back there. Um, so let's get the guys out of the way here, and we'll talk about what's going on. Because um, there is a lot. And you know, I don't want to keep you here all night. Daisy could not wait to get in the back seat of that car. Uh, Grandpa Mark and Grandma T... Our new additions, I don't know if I showed them last time or not, but I've been looking forever for getting drivers uh, and rider for the cars, and I finally found them. They, they were, I knew they were available, I just couldn't find them. So let's get the body off of the interior, and I'm going to start with the body real quick. I have two coats of quick shine on here. It's not polished yet. It's just on there. <laughs> but what I wanted to show you is, first off, I painted the visors the dark blue um, with everything else. I still got to do the black inside here, but that's that'll be quick, fast, and in a hurry. That's going to be my acrylic black that I have, my accent. This thing's old as dirt. They don't even make it anymore, but it's just acrylic black paint. But what I did with this is... How many people have problems with their uh, door lines and things like that when they use the panel liner or markers or whatever and and just struggle to get this to be nice and crisp and clean? Um, out here first. I use this. <laughs> this is a little sanding pad. And I take my mechanical pencil. Give it a good click, get a couple pieces out, put it on here and just sharpen it. You know, that's all I'm doing is just sharpening it. Take your finger and get the dust off. And then all you have to do is put that son of a gun in there and go back and forth a few times. And it's not really super dark because it really always bothered me when I would use panel liner and it would go and run in there and just be jet black. And if you look at a car, they really aren't. They're, they're more subdued than that. And the mechanical pencil I found does a great job. I did everything else the other day and you can see it, it lays in there real nice. If you bump out a little bit, um, it'll wipe right off. See like that, I can wipe it right off. I'm not really pushing that hard. So when you fumble to get the corners or the edges where you want to start and you miss a little bit, it's not a big deal. You can just wipe that off and then go to town and take your time and not have like, um, like if you're using your pen or even these, and I'm not knocking them, even these like the, the Gundam markers, um, these things got a razor sharp point on them and they, I've used them quite a bit. I use them on my models too. Um, but they have a tendency to run, um, like panel, that's pretty much a panel liner marker is what it is. Um, I've used several different things, but just recently I've started using the mechanical pencil on the past, maybe three builds because it looks it looks good. It's easy on there. I'll put my decals on. I'll run another coat of quick shine over to lock the decals in, and it'll lock the panel liner in right with it. So, just a quickie. Another one I want to throw at you, because I meant to do this now for about a month, uh, and I keep forgetting. I use, um, well, this is a contact lens case cover, but I use water bottles quite a bit. The lids for water bottles. These. Simple, cheap, disposable, recyclable. So I'll throw them in the recycle bin. But for my glue, put it in there and then I'll take a 
toothpick. And I'll use that, and then you set it down there, and next thing you know, your toothpick's glued to your tabletop. So, take your snips, come in here at a pretty sharp angle like this, give it a snip. It doesn't roll around anymore. <laughs> it only took me 55 years to figure that out. <laughs> but it works great, uh, you know, and I don't have little dots of super glue on my mat anymore. <laughs> it's so simple. So there's my tip of the day for you. But back to the car. Like I said, this thing's dropping together. Um, remember I said to cut the tip off just a little bit of your hinge. When you, when you do that, and then it'll drop in here. Nice, it comes around, fits, it goes back and forth, it locks, holds it in, still hinges up, hinges down, holds it nice in place. Uh, was Couldn't remember if I told you that one or not. So there's that. The underside, remember I sprayed the whole thing with semi-gloss black because I just could not get the right color for the uh, uh, zinc oxide or the chromium oxide or, or the red primer color that it's supposed to be. So I went with the black. I like the black anyhow. But then I took again my accent. I thinned it down with one like a little squirt of this in one of these and then maybe a drop of water in there. Thins this out to where it runs like you airbrushed it. <laughs> it, it really does. Um, I used, I'm trying to find a paintbrush here. Jeez, it wouldn't come out. Uh, just my medium flat. And you can go over this a million times and it just keeps flattening it out, but it gets into the little crevices and crannies and things. And then last night before I went up, I was test fit and stuff. But with the semi-gloss black and then the flat black, I, I, it looks good enough for me. I'm happy with it. It's what I'm used to seeing. Then I went around with the silver and I did a couple of bolts and, and things like that. But again, this is just um, dry fit on here. And I'm telling you, it almost dry fits on there enough to where it'd stay on. Um, I didn't want this to just be all um, semi-gloss black. It was just Blah, especially when I threw it on there. So I came back, I painted this metallic gray, which I'm not going to reach, but it's FX56. Uh, XF FX56. It's a metallic gray. Um, I've tried to use this on cars and, and things like that. No matter what I do after I use this color, I cannot get it to gloss up. Period. No matter how much clear I put over top of it, it just dolls out. But it looks great on the drive shaft. I'll come back tonight later on, do some panel lining, do some highlighting. The springs I used X10 gunmetal. I can reach this. It's not all the way in the back of my rack. <laughs> uh, and then I left the straps, the semi gloss just to give it a little bit of color and differentiation. Uh, big word. <laughs> um, between the, so the springs, because they, you know, they're different metal. They're not painted. Um, well, they are, but you know what I mean. Um, they're not the same color as the rear end. So that's why I went with that. My gas tank, I painted aluminum. Uh, that's just the flat aluminum. Two coats came down and then after I painted that, I came back and I touched up the semi-gloss all the way around it where nobody's perfect, you know, and it ran out a little bit on the flat. That always kind of bothered me. My exhaust, um, didn't really want to do it, but I got it in here. I'm almost afraid to trying to get it back out because I'm afraid I'm gonna break it, trying to push it out. So it may stay. Like I said, this is the Thunderball car, so I'm figuring this thing came right off the boat in the Caribbean on a trailer to the scene, and then they used it. And then it went back on a trailer, and it went to somebody's garage, and now it's worth a billion dollars. But it would be clean as a whistle, so I'm not going to um, 
do anything to the bottom of this, which is very rare for me. And it's, you know, first thing I wanted to do was come in here with my brush and dry brush a bunch of dirt on here. But this one doesn't get that. So I'm not going to put that on there. It does have the brake lines run into the mold. They come in here and they tuck in nice to where they disappear. So I'm not going to bother running those. The fuel line comes out of the pump, out of the tank, and down to here and stops. There's no fuel pump on the engine. So I'm saying this is an electric fuel pump. And if you look, there's isn't even a wire. So this is an electric fuel pump. It's pumping up. <laughs> it's my story. It's my car. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but it came out nice. That flat aluminum painted like a dream. Like I said, it was two coats real lightly done, just like the uh, exhaust. Now, I may come in here and do just a little bit of coloring to the exhaust. I haven't even panel lined it yet. So I might do just a little tiny bit on here because no matter what, this is going to show a little bit because it is heating up and it's running. So I might do a little bit of panel liner on there. Not my brown, but just my, my new thin uh, black. I say thin because I have an older bottle that thickened up on me a little bit. So this is my new thin. This is my old thicker. And uh, that's how I keep those separate. But it does a great job. Um, the thick is stuff like for the steering wheel where I wanted it to just get there and stay in one spot where the thin I want, I use that. I'll use it to spread things out like on the, uh, on the hubcaps. So I'm knocking things over here. I don't want to lose. So that's, that's where we are with that. I'm not going to do anything with the gas tank. It already looks good. If I do anything, I'll put a tiniest drop right here just to show off where the fuel line goes in and the electric line goes in. So with that, we'll go to the front. I did a little bit of looking online and most of this is black except for these. The turnbuckles aren't in here. So on the ones I saw, the turnbuckle was painted black. But since there's no turnbuckle differential on here where you can see it, I just painted the whole thing aluminum because when I had it, aluminum and just stopped. And then aluminum again, it just looked weird. So I just painted the whole thing's aluminum. I highlighted the little bolts, the, the uh, grease fittings and things like that on both sides. Um, I even put the little uh, bolts for the horn and... Uh, left that the way it is but we're looking real good the radiator got painted it's hanging out here somewhere my um radiator hose when i painted it with my um rubber black it came out the, the rubber black for some reason thickened up on me like maybe the lid didn't get closed all the way and it left this thing glossy real glossy more so than now um so I put a little bit of Tamiya's thinner in here and I wazzed it up with my uh, paint stirrer. It went right back to the way it should be. Nice and thin, easy to paint. It went on real nice. So I went over this again with it. I went to the um, belt, got the belt. Man, does that look good. I think the last two I did, that was getting a little thick, and it just, it left it a little gl more glossy than I like on the belts. This looks good. I'm happy with it. The shocks, I went over those with the uh, um, gunmetal, just to give them a little bit of highlighting. And then that's pretty much it for the, I, I could slap this all together right now and call it, you know, call it good. So... We're getting pretty darn close to buttoning this thing up. We really are. And I, I realized that last night when I had everything kind of test fit together. Now, for something I want to show you that I'm super duper proud of, and that's this interior. I had high hopes for it. I even want to, I'm going to bring it in here a little bit. 
I had high hopes for this interior and it did not let me down. The uh, dash fit in here real nice. The steering wheel, I did chrome silver. I didn't want to do Molotov pen on there because I saw online where it didn't look like it was chrome. And then the panel liner on the inside, I used the thick panel liner in here. Um, and I, I'm happy with that. I like that look. I did do the Molotov pen on the uh, turn signal. So I got to watch that I don't get my grubby dang big fingers on that. Um, this I painted semi-gloss black. But what I did first is I painted the pony. So the pony got painted. I let that dry overnight. I came back the next day and then I painted the semi-gloss black up to the pony. And it did well. <laughs> my semi-gloss black isn't very thick. It covers nice and even, but it's not super thick. So I was able to bring it up and I used my 3 aught brush. You can pause and get that name off of there if you want. Don't know if you'll ever find it again. I've had this for a long dang time, but it's a Windsor triple lot. And I use that just to kind of flow the paint up to it and then come in this way and flow it up to it that way. And then I painted around the rest of it. Came back, I did the, the chrome strip around the top um, just with chrome silver. And then I, I dotted off the um, knobs and things like that, dropped in the chrome on the top. I'm really happy with that. The radio, um, I used the chrome silver, painted it with this same brush. And this 3 odd brush actually will give me a better um, close-in point than my 4 odd brush does. My 4 odd brush did not hold up very well at all. Don't recommend it for anybody. I looked online. It's not even available anymore. But this thing held up very well. But I was able to paint everything. Then I came back. I did clear green on the radio because for some reason I always think that those radio dials were the greenish color. And then I hit the buttons with panel liner. And... I did the panel liner inside here with thin panel liner and it worked out really good for me. And that dash is really sharp, I think. So the top and the interior, let's start with the, the uh, uh, carpet. The carpet was the same color as the seats, as this this royal blue in the back and that's just x4 blue um then i took that and i mixed that with uh, just a drop or two like three or four drops of the blue with one drop of flat black and i painted all the carpet with that and i was like oh that looks pretty good but we can do better so I grabbed my pastels and I went in there with the black and kind of real lightly with black. Then I went in there with just a tiny bit of white and I did a little dabs here and there with the white. And then I came back and did a little bit with the blue on here. So I used the black first, then just a very light with the white. And then I used some of this, this medium blue. And this kit came from Hobby Lobby. They still sell it. I got this thing forever ago. It does not wear out. You can see the brown and the black I use all the time along with the desert um, yellow. But this is the first time I ever used the blue. And I'm happy with that carpet. Really happy with the carpet. It looks like carpet. I don't know. I hope it looks like carpet on the screen because it really does and it's not flocked but it looks like it is just not um real deep but the seats 
they were this royal blue too. And then the seats, the, the side panels and things like that, I panel lined them first. Just a wash of panel liner. Uh, covered them completely and then took a Q-tip and wiped them off a little bit. And then I let that dry overnight and I came back with the blue pastel. And I rubbed it up and down this way and I ground which way the grain would go in those seats. And it transformed it into being this royal blue into these awesome looking seats. Knocked the shine down quite a bit and just kind of gave them that, that good car seat look. This is, this is the only thing I can call it. Worked out great. The chrome I got a little heavy handed with. It is a lot thicker than I wanted, but when you sit it down this way, I think it looks really good looking at it from the side. So it plays the part. The armrest went in no problem. I put the glue on the body and then dropped, literally dropped the armrest in and got it to where it fits right. Um, painted the ashtray and the rear window crank on both sides, the crank and the door latch on the front. The center column is the blue. And then the middle of that, I used bare metal foil and rubbed it in, got it looking good cut around the sides, pulled off the extra, and then I came back on the outer sides with Molotow pen and gave it that drop chrome on the outer sides. You really can't tell the difference between the Molotow pen and the raised part of the center column. The inside of here, right there, I think looks really good aluminum. It looks like that that brushed aluminum, or, or the, this one's lined aluminum. The stick shift, rubber black on the bottom. And you can see that's kind of glossy because I didn't repaint it after I, I mixed it. So you can see how much gloss is on that compared to um, the radiator hose. It made a huge difference. And then the uh, I needed that white knob on the, on the steering wheel. Or on the steering wheel, geez, on the stick shift. I wanted that big, huge cue ball on there. And then I Molotow penned up the center where that big, the mold line was. I sanded that off and that left a big bare spot. So the Molotow pen made that to where you can't tell where I scraped it and where I didn't. So we're good to go there. This I'm not going to glue in until after I got the, uh, um, I can't even see this, after I have the glass in the, in the body because I want to make sure that the angle's right on that with the glass so it's not sitting like, <laughs> like this after all of that. So that's why that's still not glued into place. Usually I, I do that earlier. But this one, it's, there's such a big gap here on both sides that I can go quite a bit with that. And I don't want that angle to be messed up with the glass. I want it to be sitting in there just perfectly. Um, so there's that. And then, like I said, we have the driver and, and passenger. You know, these things come there. Uh, legs are cut off at the at the knees so that you can get them underneath. This is a great idea. Get them underneath the steering wheel and in. So I don't have to glue them in since this is a, uh, a convertible. I'll be able to pull these guys out and run them with this, with a couple of the roadsters, you know, here and there, all over the place. So they'll move around. But... I was looking for them for a long time. I'm super happy I found them. And then I forgot I bare metal foiled the chrome on both sides of the the seat where it comes up the, the supports. Remember, there's a passenger side and a driver's side. So when you're putting it together, mark it so you don't forget that chrome goes on the outside. So we got that. And now, last thing. I have my spider. <laughs> I 
I'm in the middle of doing my um, my spark plug wires. I am doing a video on this, so I'm just waiting right now for the headers or the exhaust manifolds to dry completely, and then we'll start bending these over and looking good. But I got the fuel line run down and around, and like I said, there's no fuel pump on the front of this, so I'm running it around, and then underneath here, fuel line runs up and into the gas tank, and then there's another line there, and we're going to call that the electric line. So, like I said, my story, I'm going to stick with it. I added the radiator lines, or the radiator hoses, the one comes up, tags into the choke, and comes back. The other one just comes out and around, and I got them just running kind of wild right now. Once I get this to where I'm going to put it in, we'll fuss with these to get them bent the right way in the back here. So when I put it in up against the firewall, which doesn't even have a heater core, but once I get it in here, I'll put it up to where it goes into the firewall here and uh, looks good. And with that being the flat black, it'll disappear in there and look nice. So there is that. Da, 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 da. I made a coil. I set that in the front. I've seen a bunch of them online where the coil's sitting right off where the head is here. I am really hoping that when I'm done, because uh, I haven't even fit it, that my alternator and everything fits in here right. And let's do that right now so we can all go yay or aw. <laughs> Yeah, we got no problems here. Look at that. That alternator sits way down there on this. So we are good to go. No problems. The distributor uh, was sent to me. Uh, it was sized. The, it had a long shaft. I, sh I cut that down. But it's even molded with the uh, 0.3 millimeter holes in it for the spark plug wires. So I don't even have to mess with that. Um, <laughs> they're awesome. They really are. And so perfect. They even have the vacuum advance on them. So we are good to go. And with that, and now that we know the alternator, everybody will sleep better tonight, I'm going to let you go. So I want to thank everybody for the kind words, the thumbs up, the subscriptions and all that. And y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow.